Tom here from Launch Systems, and we're going to talk about small business camera systems. There's a lot of options out there, and I'm going to talk about, you know, this little setup right here, why we chose this, and some of the parameters around it. It is not exclusively the one we sell, but we sell different solutions to fit different client needs. So if you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire share a project, there's a hires button up at the top. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below for products and services and discounts and deals for things we talk about on this channel, including I'll have a description of all the parts used in this particular setup. So I am well aware that the uh, Ubiquity videos I did were very popular, but unfortunately Unify discontinued their self-hosted software. They, I have a video on that, I'll leave a link to, they discontinued support for it. And it seems to be one of the most frequently asked questions of, well, we really want a camera system, but what happened to Unify? Now we really liked the Unify cameras. We thought they had a great system and they moved everything over to Protect, which does require their cloud hosted system as opposed to the one where you could build it yourself. Because of that, we've had to, for many of the small businesses we offered, when they needed larger camera systems, we've continued to support the installs we have done in the past with Unify, but in going forward, since the software bio Unify's own words is no longer being updated, we've had to look at other solutions. So that brings me to the Synology Real Link combination. Now, I really like the Synology surveillance station. I'll leave a link to the video I did on the software. It's actually really nice software. The parameters for this particular client was no recurring fees, no paying for cloud hosting, et cetera, et cetera, no cloud management. They wanted everything self-contained, self-managed, and that's perfectly fine. That's what this build out is about. And including the from the PoE switch to the Synology, yes, there's a license you do need for the Synology surveillance station, but they're one-time license fees that are transferable. So it is not tied specifically to the camera, it's tied to the quantity of cameras that you have attached to your Synology surveillance station set up. And I covered that in the video, but just so I'm always clear on it, once you install these licenses, they are transferable per Synology. They've sent me that as an email and uh, they do not care what camera, they only care about quantity. So that does fit the bill for that. I'm aware of some of the other higher end systems, but many of them you know, do have some levels of subscription and support services with it. So we're gonna focus on this one right here today. Now, these real link cameras, and they've been pretty good to us. So they're five megapixels, HD, 4X optical zoom, indoor outdoor cameras for $89.99. They've been really reasonably priced and our failure rate on them is not zero but um, it's pretty reasonable. And I see that for as many of we installed, I think we're at about a 1% failure rate, which is actually high in my opinion for cameras, but we don't know if they were flukes uh, of the market or what. In some of the past installs we did, we had them DOA in the testing period, like out of the box setting them up, they just didn't work. Now they were awesome working with Amazon Real Link and sent them back and got a replacement, no big deal. And we had one die in the field, but it died in a weird way. It got half a picture and we rebooted the camera and it always came up with a half a picture. So we've had a couple die out of the maybe couple hundred we installed, which is uh, to me a high number at 2%, but not end of the world high number uh, for the price. And we generally keep a handful in stock and it's not that big of a deal, except when they're out in the field and installed. That's one of the reasons you see this big mess in front of you is all the testing we do. Uh, these actually have been running for several days and recording, we make sure we do a little bit of burn in because um, specifically these ones are gonna be mounted up high. Sometimes it requires lift rentals to mount some of these cameras or high ladders and getting in places. You don't wanna have to replace them out in the field. The ones we've installed out in the field and of course they're exposed to weather and everything else, uh, they've survived, well, at least, you know, because we've only been selling these for about a year now, they've survived a Michigan winter and they've survived some Michigan summers. And now I'm covering them. I've been using them for a little while, but part of the thing I like to do is review things over time. And I may cover and go back and uh, cover one of the installs we did last year. I'm gonna be going on site to do a video for it to show a year later what how the cameras are holding up. Because that's what really matters. Now, if you install them today and they work, you wanna know, did they work after a year of weather exposure or did they fail? That's a better metric in my opinion. So we are confident enough that we are still putting these up because besides the couple we've had to go bad, the overall has been good on them and the picture quality is reasonably good. Now Synology supports a massive amount of uh, cameras. Like the, the variety of support has been amazing. So you can mix and match. We chose all these real links for this particular job, but yes, you can mix and match cameras. Throw a few WD purple drives in there. So these are the drives we chose that go inside of here. The Amazon 16 port PoE gigabit ethernet unmanaged PoE switch. Um, I do like a lot of the Unify PoE switches, but these Netgear ones are kind of cool. And um, they 
are solid. We've put in a handful of these. They're unmanaged, but it's not something that matters in this particular case because we build out and slice up a separate network just for these cameras. So they're not on the shared network with everything else. There's a firewall that they have and we split off the traffic so there's a dedicated camera network and that's where this will all be living is on that dedicated camera network. So all the cameras will talk to Synology. And if you're not familiar with how Synology is set up, they do have dual network interfaces on this DS918 plus. So those dual interfaces um, allow for us, and I think we got a picture of the back because I don't have an easy way to show it to you. But there we go. Dual interfaces. So you stick one interface with all the cameras and you can put the other interface on the LAN or you can just poke a firewall rule through there depending how you want to configure it. But the cameras aren't a completely separated LAN. So a managed switch and VLANs just aren't necessary. It is split up at the firewall level ahead of this switch. So once again, it's just a matter of keeping all the cameras on the same network and it's PoE. The little switches we have here are some TP-Link POEs, and that's because we got to run a underground cable and to a couple cameras on the other side of this building we're putting them on. So there wasn't, they didn't want to pay to run every single run from the Netgear switch. So we have a couple TP-Link switches in here which is these ones here. And they're just gonna be at kind of the outlying building after we do a long, one really long cable run uh, to get it over there. So it comes off of the neck gear, goes over to these, and there's gonna be a couple cameras on each side. So yes, we could have ran direct cable all the way, but when you're doing um, burial cable, they didn't really want to pay for all the runs. Like I said, this is comes down to meeting with client budget, client expectations to get things done. Um, there's always someone who says, well, I only sell the top of the line, super expensive access cameras, which don't get me wrong, access makes really nice equipment, but this project would have been out of their budget and they simply wouldn't have gone with it. So it is about, you know, client expectations, client needs. So finally, all this is set up to the Synology surveillance station. Let's actually look at the cameras now. So here's what they look like. And I took this one here and put the stream quality a little bit higher. And you can kind of hear, I, if you hear the noise, it does have audio on these cameras. So this allows us to uh, record all the audio, which was another request that the client had. They want to be able to hear what's going on in some of the areas. This is going kind of like a industrial type site. So they're able to go back, play back audio, because it can matter on the machines that are running if they hear something that occurs before an incident, that is something important to them. Um, and that you can easily and quickly access things. So a lot of people ask me about, what about you know XYZ system? Well, the problem with some of the other systems, especially the single drive systems, which like the Unify Protect, is the amount of storage you need and the Synology Surveillance Station has four drives in it. So we build a RAID array with some redundancy and it can send out notifications if there's a failure on there. And this gives them the storage room with these drives for the number of days. That's obviously a calculation you have to work out with the client. How many days are you gonna need and build the storage appropriately? And of course, you gotta ask how much redundancy do you want? And the more redundancy, because the data is maybe more valuable to them, matters um, a lot to how much storage you got to buy again and how many of those drives are paired or you just want to read zero everything. That comes down to, once again, some of the design and planning. But as you can see, this real link here, and maybe you can see what's on here talking about BGP, let's go ahead and just grab a snapshot real quick out of it. And we're going to go ahead and download the snapshot. And let's see, can I zoom here? You can see, well, we can read the signatures from the IT Pro TV Christmas card that I have set here. Um, read the talk about BGP and everything else. And you can see it's quite good in terms of resolution and quality that uh, the cameras have. We've been really happy with it. Matter of fact, we could probably point it more towards the kitchen over here. And these do have that zoom. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more. The kitchen's a little bit of a mess. You can see the firewall. Let's see if we can get it zoomed in a little bit more, and we'll grab a snapshot of these cameras. Snapshot. Pull this up. And uh, let's see, let's look here. Well, you can see the kind bars, the pepper. You can probably even recognize what hot sauces are on the table from across the room. So I'm gonna say these cameras for $89. You can see our uh, Fry Daddy and our toaster oven here. You can see these are pretty good for the price. When you talk about a, a camera that's within a good budget, but 
also a reasonable good quality. These real lakes have really hit the mark. I know people like some of the other brands and you can choose a completely different brand of camera with this and it'll work fine. But like I said, the list of support on the Synology has been great. Now our overall, because now we've been deploying mainly Synology, I've been very happy with it. Our clients have been very happy with it. They do have the ability, once we map the firewall, they have their Quick Connect, they have their phone app, so you can view these from the phone. They have reasonably easy, I think, software to access. I mean, I will, like I said at the beginning, hats off to Unify. They did a really great job on building a nicer interface for the camera system, but the Synology is pretty reasonable. And like I said, I did a more in-depth review that I can link to if you wanna watch that video on the Synology. Now, the other last little part I will talk about here is when we do the deployment, and I'll jump to the overhead right here, is yes, it does look kind of messy. And just so you can see the type of ends on these, they do support separate if you wanted to power them, not PoE, like with the adapters with these cameras, uh, but we generally are gonna do PoE and they got the little twist locks on them if you have the right ends uh, to come on the other side. We're gonna seal these really good and be using these. These are the other end what goes on these twist locks. So when these go in, these got little gaskets and everything. So even though the camera mounted on the outside here with the mounting bracket, it protrudes through into the building. So yes, they seal really nice. Cause I thought I'd at least mention that cause people, uh, you know, some of the cheaper cameras don't always come with a good way to seal it. These do, these come with a little rubber part to put through, you crimp the end on and uh, pretty good. So my, my overall is really cameras for for being less than $100 a camera with a 4X optical zoom, uh, they're pretty solid in terms of build quality and functionality. And like I said, we haven't had that many go bad uh, overall. So it's not been not been that bad of a problem with, and they do have, if you are fine with a fixed uh, focal zoom, they're about mm, $50 less, I think. I think about $50 less, you can get the ones with fixed focal zoom. We really like going with the optical zoom because well, because then you got to buy wide or buy uh, more zoomed in ones. And that can be a challenge because the client doesn't necessarily know. You got to work with them when you're doing the planning phase. But when you buy the optical zoom ones, if they go, can you widen that view a little bit? Or can you bring that view a little bit closer? Most of the time we set them all to the widest and then bring them in as needed when we actually do the deployments for the clients. Uh, and it's, it's been really handy to be able to do that. So they can bring it in and go, oh, okay, I needed that tighter view on that one. But, uh, you know, 4X optical is a pretty reasonable range. They do have some ones that are higher. And like I said, you can also do the mix and matching of these where you put different cameras in different areas based on the needs of the client and based on, you know, how the job works out. So my overall, like I said, we've deployed quite a few of these. Uh, they fit the budget really well. The clients like them, the usability, we've had extremely good reliability out of the Synology. Someone will always bring up the question of the Synology and the power brick issue. Uh, I've never done a Synology review where someone doesn't bring it up. And we have had zero of these fail. I believe Synology, if I'm not mistaken, used to build the power bricks internal with some of their older models. And I guess those were prior to my using of Synology, ones that caused some problems, but our impression of these with the external bricks has been, none of them have failed on us at all of all the deployments we've done. And we've done a couple camera jobs a little bit bigger than this on some bigger Synologies. They have a lot of offerings on that. They even have one uh, that goes a step further in terms of an even higher performance Synology system, uh, which it has some type of recognition of objects and things like that. Uh, I haven't had a chance to review any of those yet, but these smaller, like this DS918 uh, Plus has been a great performer for uh, a job this size. And like I said, the nice thing is if they decide they want to triple or double the cameras, we can do one of two things, put another Synology in or transfer the licenses and drives and make a bigger Synology uh, to handle even larger volumes of cameras and traffic that they want in there or if their storage needs change. There's always the option with Synology of expanding and moving. Uh, they have archiving options for storage. So there's there's kind of a lot of expandability options. And I think Surveillance Station is a just really nice feature with Synology, plus all the other little things uh, that you can get with it. It's been, it's been pretty cool with these little MVRs because uh, they're more than an MVR to be able to do things with. But that's my thoughts on this. If you're looking for a budget camera system, this setup right here, I'll leave links below to the kit that we built with this is one we've been really happy with. Um, and I'm gonna do some follow-up videos on this because we actually have one we built with a this right here plus site to site to get it to the other side of the building. And uh, there's too much interference on this particular location to do a site to site. That's why we have, it, the project's gonna require some direct burial cable uh, to be trenched and put in. but. Overall, it does work really well, even if you do break this down over a site to site. Um, all right, like I said, leaps below to everything else, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.